holds me there for a second and tells me that he he could kill me. She kicked uh, the bathroom door uh, into my head. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Over and over. On my side of the bed. Um, was human fecal matter. Only way out of this is death. Only way out of this is death. Well, in case it's not clear from my get up today, our video today will be about the mess of the relationship that is Amber Heard and Johnny Depp's marriage. Of course, all the sordid details have been put out on tabloids. We've been talking about the horrible behaviour that they've inflicted on each other in court. But of course, today's video is not just about the gossipy details. I'm very sure you can get that from any of these other millions of YouTube videos. But today, what we're going to be looking at is how do two people in love and who get married have their behaviour degenerate into into behaviour that you no longer expect from Hollywood stars. And in fact, today, what we want to be examining here is not a relationship of two Hollywood stars, but rather two ordinary people who have been very unhappy in their marriage. So today, we'll be asking some questions about how, how does that behaviour degenerate? How is it that people can remain in an abusive marriage for a very long time? And are we seeing such patterns in millions of relationships around the world but possibly not in such a strong degree. Okay, so we're going to be looking into their charts to see how this came about. So the first question we want to ascertain is, are they abusive people? And if so, what kind of abuse are we talking about? So what you're seeing on my screen here is the chart of Johnny Depp. You can see his birth information to the left here. Now what I want to draw your attention to here is the first two planets here in the very first house. Now if you see where Mars is, some of you may know that Mars represents anger. And in a man's chart, sometimes it, it describes how we go about getting what we want. So typically speaking, in a man's chart, if Mars is in the first house, it's not difficult for Johnny Depp to appear masculine and macho. Now we've seen this countless times in Hollywood films and it really works to his advantage. But however, in a, in a personal relationship, where Mars is in the first house, this can also mean that he may react in a physical manner. Let's just say if he doesn't get what he wants. Uh, and also, there is the blue coloured planet here which is known as Uranus. And Uranus has, um, how we describe it is a bit of, it can be violent, it can be very unpredictable, and sometimes it can, together with Mars, it can be a bit of a violent combination. Uh, it also doesn't help that Pluto is nearby, and Pluto tends to be pretty intense and sometimes dominating. So to, although I don't know these people personally, but looking at the chart, if you ask me, would he have some tendencies to be violent? Uh, the short answer would be yes. Now the whole combination here is in Virgo. And sometimes Virgo has a reputation for being a little bit uh, intolerant of situations that aren't perfect. So let's just say he's not getting what he wants. I can imagine that he, uh, if you tell me that he's screaming and shouting, that he might lash out and, and hit people every now and then, uh, I would not be surprised to hear this. Now having said that, it doesn't mean that every single person with this combination is going to necessarily be physically violent. There are lots of people who have been able to channel this in a positive manner. And in fact, Johnny Depp has been able to do that. If you've watched him in Pirates of the Caribbean, and I, I believe he, do he does his fight scenes by himself, and it does take a lot of physical dexterity to sort of wield a sword and he, he does a really good job. And I think it's only a problem if we don't behave uh, in, in an acceptable manner. Also, in, well, you definitely see that he has a tendency for violence. Now, the question here is, do we see the same pattern in Amber Heard's chart? So, in, in Amber's chart, she has Mars in the sixth house. So, in this respect, uh, it's not usually a violent placement, I, I should say. And she also has Mars in Capricorn. So for the most part, uh, she is not your typical violent person. Now having said that, uh, from my calculations, I also see that Mars is out of bounds. So this term, out of bounds, also means that when, when her anger rises, it can happen very quickly and she might not have a lot of control over her behaviour. Uh, this placement is particularly useful for somebody who works very hard. That means if she decides to do something, she can have endless energy. 
which is good for work but not great when you are throwing your tantrum. So what we have here is that two people who might have some anger management problems. Now sometimes we see that in relationships where one person might be a bit more uh, quick to react while the other person could be more calm. But of course, you might get a bit more uh, of a violent exchange between partners if both of them have difficulties managing their anger. Now the second question is, if the allegations of abuse are true, how is it that they've managed to stay in the relationship for as long as they have? So let's start first with Johnny's chart. And what I see here is that she has Moon in Capricorn. And typically, people with Moon in Capricorn, are they tend to want personal relationships that are stable, that can last for a very long time. So in this case, my guess is that Johnny is not typically the kind of man who wants to sort of like move in and out of relationships. And I know that's a crazy idea for a lot of people because you're one of the sexiest men alive, you're a famous Hollywood actor. Most people will assume maybe he just wants to like have casual relationships, but this is not what the chart suggests to me. Like he does want to be settled with a proper wife. And I think for many people around the world, something like this could be one of the reasons why the tendency is to, we want to work on our relationship, we don't want to give up on it so easily, I want to be mature and try. So I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but it could also be one of the reasons why Johnny has stuck on with this relationship. Now the third question here is that what really were their expectations of each other as they came into this relationship and were they met? Now the first person I want to look at is Amber. But uh, I have to caveat here that I was not able to find her exact birth time on the internet. So here we have an approximate birth time that is set for noon. But what I see here is that in a woman's chart, the sun's position gives us a good indication of what she might expect out, out of a man. And in this case, we have um, the sun forming this opposition with Pluto. And this tells me that she might need a very intense man, somebody whom she can lean on in times of crisis. Now I can imagine that for Amber Heard, she has a huge age gap with Johnny Depp. And in fact, Amber Heard is just a year younger than I am. And I could remember being a child watching Johnny Depp playing Edward Scissorhands on TV. And, and I've, I've seen his movies for years and years. So I can imagine for someone like Amber Heard to see Johnny Depp as being a powerful figure in, in the industry, he certainly is. And uh, I think the expectation here was that he would be very resilient, that he would be able to take any kind of crisis. Now, unfortunately, at the time of their marriage, uh, my understanding is that he had run into a lot of financial problems. Now, Amber is a Taurus. And uh, one of the expectations of a woman with, uh, with a Taurus son here might be that he is financially stable which he definitely was not at the time of their marriage. So it might also make her feel rather insecure that I thought I married a Hollywood big wig. I thought I was going to be made for life, that we'll be rich forever. And to, and to know that his millions might be gone um, can be very unsettling for her. And at the same time, she also has the Sun Neptune. These trines here uh, indicates that she might have some kind of um, like a bit of hero worship, which is entirely possible if you were to marry, of all people, Johnny Depp. Uh, she might have been might have been very shocking for her to see her husband snoring on the bed just like most husbands do, uh, which can be very jarring if you think that Johnny Depp is supposed to be sexy all the time. So there could be some unrealistic expectations of the man that she had married. And on the flip side, we also want to look at Johnny Depp's chart. And in this case, he has Moon in Capricorn. Now, an interesting fun fact is that actually a lot of Hollywood A-list actors have Moon in Capricorn. For example, George Clooney also has Moon in Capricorn and so does Brad Pitt. So if you look at some of the marriages that have worked for them, now Brad Pitt was happily married to Jennifer Aniston for the longest time. And the people with Moon in Capricorn tend to want women who are career-oriented, they are settled, they are respected by society. These are never women who will do weird things or don't behave themselves. So with Jennifer Aniston, that seemed pretty good and some people say that he's considering getting back with her again. Uh, I certainly hope so. But on top of that, George Clooney has really hit the jackpot with that because his wife, Amal Clooney, being the, the United Nations lawyer that she is, is absolutely the description of Moon in Capricorn. She is respected, she has a great career, and Amal Clooney never ever misbehaves in public. Now in this case, Johnny Depp, even though with his reputation of drugs and alcohol and, and misbehaviour, the funny thing is with, he, with this particular position in his chart, you would expect that as a Hollywood actor, he would want to sleep around, that being the sexiest man alive, it would be easy to get a casual relationship. But the chart does not suggest to me that that's what he wants. He wants to be settled. And 
His expectations of a wife can be very similar to that of George Clooney and of Brad Pitt. Now in this case, I think to some extent maybe Amber Heard might have been like that. I mean, after all, she did dress like this in the courtroom, so maybe she had the bit of that Capricorn thing. But perhaps her behaviour in private, if, she, if the allegations are true and if she had been abusive, if she had whacked him or said certain things to him, she might not have been behaving in the way that he had hoped from a wife. So what we see here is that both of these people uh, had very specific requirements they had of a spouse and it's quite possible that neither of them met each other's expectations. Now one more question that is on people's minds is that is Amber Heard lying? And it, I'm sure you can see online that there are lots of these videos showing how she she doctored some pictures, she's like made some, she's dramatized some of the conversations that they've had. And right now she's getting a lot of enemies because there are people saying that she doesn't tell the truth, she's padding the, the story. And so when we look into the chart, are there indications that she's a liar? Now the short answer is yes, but there's a little bit more to the story. Now what I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is, if you look at the chart now, this is the whole of Amber Heard's chart, but I'm going to be reducing the planets so you get a better view. So you see on the screen now, we have reduced it to just these three planets. And by now, it will be clear to you now that I've got something, a red triangle here known as a T-square. Now what we see here is, typically speaking, when a person is a bit predisposed to not telling the truth, we have a connection here between Mercury and Neptune, as I indicate here. Now, as I said, this is very clear in Amber Heard's chart. Now what we see here is, it's easy for all of us to focus on the fact that she doesn't tell the truth or she's making this drama thing. Having said that, we want to look back at the psychological profile here. Mercury Neptune is also known as the storyteller. And while it sounds terrible here that she is telling lies in court, but this can actually be in her favour because as a Hollywood actress, the fact is a lot of what we see on the screen is not real anyway. We are looking at effects. We are looking at stunts that aren't really stunts. We are looking at people pretending to be Aquaman's uh, love interest under the sea when we all know she's not under the sea. So in terms of, uh, of a professional ability, that really works in her favour. But in this case, if she's telling lies, she's doctoring pictures, what might be the motivation behind it? It's that typically speaking, psycho in a psychological manner, the storyteller lies because A, they're trying to get attention. Or B, she actually thinks of herself as a victim. And therefore, if the story isn't convincing enough, if it doesn't get your attention enough, then it could be Sometimes it's designed to sort of make the story more compelling so that you will believe her. So what I want to point out here is that although, yes, I mean, she's not telling the truth, but it also means that it, this is a cry for help in, in many ways. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm hoping that at least after this is done, that she gets the help that she needs uh, in order to sort out whatever feelings she has about her marriage. So earlier what we looked at was their charts on their own. And some of you might be familiar with the fact that astrology can look at two people's charts to look at compatibility factors. But let's have a word here about compatibility. I think for most people, you go online and then you want to do like a love calculator thing and then you put two charts together and they tell you are 62.5% compatible. Well, I, I would say as a professional that that's maybe not the best way to use com compatibility astrology. But the, the science behind this is known as synastry. So when we put two charts together, what we're looking for is, are there energies that, that gel together? And sometimes, interestingly, when two people come together, they can create new energies that by themselves, they don't have. So in fact, what I've done here on my screen is I have combined the two charts together. And uh, because I don't have Amber's birth information, I've just put her, her planets around Johnny Depp's planets. So uh, I'm not going to go into the detail of each one, but what I am going to talk about here is how some things are being emphasized. So when I look at both of these parties, there are certain patterns such as victimization is ultra emphasized for both of them. In fact, both parties have a tendency to feel like they are the victim, that if you yell at me, poor me, and I'm going to go sit and cry in the corner. So the unfortunate thing is neither of them are willing to be the strong party. And it's too easy for them to feel like um, you've been mean to me. Okay, so that's the pattern that we've seen so far. Another one is the Mercury-Saturn profile, where one of the behaviours of this 
uh, psychological profiles that they are not very good with open communication. I think sometimes the assumption is, what's the point of saying anything? I don't think that person wants to listen to me. They are not open. And I think sometimes the assumption that the other person doesn't want to listen also means that you never actually share what it is that you want to say. So although the court case has shown them saying very horrible things to each other, I suspect they've never had a real heart-to-heart -heart talk in their whole marriage. Now we also have, like as I said earlier, Mars Uranus is known as the thrill seeker. And sometimes one horrible trait of the Mars Uranus is that sometimes they like a bit of spice, a little bit of, uh, of spunk in their relationship. And what this means is just us sitting down, having breakfast in a peaceful manner is just, you know, too meh for them. They, they quite like a little bit of uh, violence with each other. And for some couples, maybe that leads to very nice makeup sex or whatever it is. But at this point, it does look like they've taken it too far and uh, they have been quite um, literally abusive to each other. Now, like I said also, when two people come together, we also see energies that they don't have by themselves. But because of this friction between two people, it creates an additional problem that they may not have with other partners. Now, some people have mentioned that Johnny Depp has been married or been in long-term relationships before with other actresses. And I, it doesn't seem like it ever got to this level of, of abuse. So the question here is that what really happened with him and Amber Heard? Because what I see from my calculations is that two particular profiles came out of their relationship that he doesn't have, she doesn't have, but together they have it. So th these two profiles are the Sun Jupiter, which is the teacher, and Mercury Jupiter, which is the philosopher. So unfortunately, both of these profiles love to be correct. So that means the tendency is to judge each other that you, what you did was not morally correct and what you've done is, is such a disgrace. So this judgment creates the stress between them and Mercury Jupiter in particular has a tendency to be very argumentative. So this is what you see, two people in court literally saying that I'm correct, you are wrong and no, no, I'm correct, you are wrong and therefore they, they start to pick at bones. Now, you've seen normal couples do this as well when they are on WhatsApp they've got a bit of an argument going and one person says, how dare you use this word? This word I don't agree with. And before you know it, we've forgotten what we are actually fighting about and we're just arguing about whether this word was correct or whether it was acceptable. So some of you may have such a profile or you may know of other people who have that and relationships can really degenerate if we are not conscious of this. Now, having spoken so much about these two famous people, one of the questions on your mind then is that isn't there no chance for these two people to ever be happy in a relationship? And you know what? The answer is yes. To a large extent, these two are very similar people. Both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp are very Earth-dominant people. And what this means is what they share in common is that they want something very stable. And uh, in, to a large extent, they may not want a very active lifestyle where they're moving around. They want to enjoy a beautiful home. They like nice food. And for many couples out there, it's just the simple life that everybody wants. Now, what I see also is that um, per perhaps what Johnny Depp could have had if, if his wife was able to be a stabilizing force, if she was confident, she wanted to work on her career. We also saw as part of the, of the court case that he had been very supportive of her career. He opened many, many doors for her to get opportunities uh, in her professional life. And as far as that was concerned, they were doing really well. Amber Heard was looking for a husband who would be a practical dreamer, a very artistic, very charming sort of person. And to be fair, she did find that in Johnny Depp. So this would characterize the early parts of their relationship. And I think even till now, that's still the foundation for the compatibility between them. But perhaps, unfortunately for them, it could be that there was too much fame, there was too much attention, there was too much competition between them. And unfortunately, they let the argumentativeness get the better of them. So in closing, what we want to talk about is if for everyone else in the world, a lot of what we've discussed today isn't unique to both Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Perhaps in your own life or even in the marriages and the relationships of people that you see in your life, a lot of these patterns are also present. But fortunately for most of us, we are not rich or we are not famous enough to have all our solid details on the tabloids. But in this case, you may also notice that these patterns don't just show up in romantic relationships, they can also happen in business relationships where good partnerships can go to the docks just because we decided to not agree with things or we decided that being correct was more important than listening to the other party. 
So what is very important for us as we move forward into our relationships, whether you are dealing with an existing relationship or if you're single and you're going into, you're hoping to go into a very supportive relationship. Now, the most important thing is to be very intentional and to understand what it is in the relationship that we are signing up for and also to know that we have a role in making the re a good relationship happen. Now, I think that most people are intelligent enough to see the red flags and the warning signs very early on in relationships. Most of us can see that there are areas where we don't quite agree with what a partner is doing or perhaps a partner may have certain behaviours that don't quite rub you the right way. Now, what's important is not to ignore those things and it doesn't mean that we have to break relationships up just because there are one or two behaviours that, that aren't perfect for you. But what I think is the most important thing is to be intentional when you go into a relationship and to understand what is it, what is it exactly that we are signing up for and how is it that we can work together and, com and make that compromise so that we can understand and appreciate what the other partner actually brings into a relationship. Now, it is easy to look to the other party and say, why aren't you making me happy? Why aren't you the exact perfect person that I'm looking for? But ultimately, it's also for us to say, how are we responsible in making ourselves happy and also to ensure that the partner gets the relationship that they are looking for as well. Now, if you like this analysis, let me know in the comments if there are other famous people or historical figures that you'd like me to examine and whose psychological profiles are you most interested in. So let me know, okay? So don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video.